Read all the stories at homeoffice.studio and watch all the videos to get an exceptionally advanced, entertaining education. Greetings, Earthlings. I am figure I'll make a video about uh, transhumanism and globalization. Um, I, uh, it's a very interesting subject. I have, my view of it is it's not necessarily a bad thing. I think that, uh, you know, transhumanism, you know, being able to like say for somebody injured and lost their legs, being able to have artificial legs would be a good thing and things like that. As far as putting chips in people's brains, uh, I'm a little more skeptical about that. I, I think it should be 100% voluntary and uh, reversible. You know, so people can do it if they want to, but they don't. Nobody has to do it. It's just, you know, this idea that doctors have a right to tell people what to do is totally wrong and it should be immediately as fast as we can we got to fix that because it's not okay for anybody to tell anybody else what to do what to believe or anything like that and uh, so I think that's a really super important thing we need to work on I I just you know we, our laws definitely need to be upgraded updated for this technology the computer you know, this one global cloud of artificial intelligence that we have is a, the most powerful weapon ever invented. And it needs to be well regulated and we can do that. It's, you know, it's something, it's just human nature. We got to fix, you know, take care of whatever is going on. And that's the level our civilization has evolved to the point where First of all, we have one global civilization, you know, you can fly from anywhere on earth to anywhere on earth nonstop. You know, at this point, you know, we got airplanes that can fly around, the, you know, halfway around the world and without stop, you know, with one load of fuel. And then we've got uh, the internet, you know, you can have a conversation with anybody in, on earth you know, pretty two-way, you know, video teleconference, you know. So we effectively already have one universal civilization. You know, the United Nations is is major progress. You know, it's not perfect. You know, no nation is, no, no, there's no perfect nation or perfect civilization or anything like that. You know, we can always improve civilization. We can always improve human nature and civilization. Improving human nature is a good thing too. You know, I'm, you know, it's just that the one thing we need to be on guard against is bullies trying to control human nature and civilization. That's what we need to be on guard against. It's not the United Nations, it's not world government or globalization or transhumanism. It's anybody trying to control any other person other than themselves is that's the problem you know any kind of a social hierarchy is a problem you know because all men are created equal that's like a natural law just like the law of gravity or the speed of light or something like that it's, it just is what it is now People have different talents and interests and, you know, and, you know, we, not ambition, ambition, but uh, motives and stuff like that. Everybody's got their own, you know, unique personality and everything like that. So everybody is not going to be the same, but where everybody is equal before the law. And, you know, and if somebody's causing trouble and harm and, you know, then, you know, there's, you know, this idea of equality is an important idea. The idea that people thinking that they're more or less important than anybody else is, it's insulting to most people are insulting. Anybody that thinks they're more, you know, 
trying to be more important than anybody else, it's, it's insulting to, the, uh, to people. And uh, that's the cause of most conflict in, in human history is people being insulted, you know, individually and collectively. All crime and war is caused by that. You know, actually, you know what? Crime and war is caused by people make it, trying to make the rules. You know, there, God makes the rules. And he, he makes rules that are, uh, you know, natural law. You know, the speed of light and the, the laws of gravity and the laws of chemistry and the laws of biology and psychology. There's laws of, you know, natural laws that govern those facets of nature. And human beings prosper when we seek the truth about those laws and tr nature. You know, science is the search for truth about natural history. Religion is the search for truth about spirituality. And both of them are, you know, they're, they're complementary. They're the, they're the yin and yang of our search for truth. And we need both of them. And so being able to, uh, you know, we got to t take... Uh, You know, these natural laws that govern human nature, equality is one of the most important ones. You know, freedom, equality, and justice for all, those are natural laws. You know, and I'm not talking about wild. Wild and free are two entirely different things. You know, freedom is lawful, wild is lawless. Freedom is like submission to God, is the nature of freedom. That's what freedom is, is submission to God. Because human beings are ruled by God. Free men are ruled by God. They're civilized. Human beings are ruled by God. Okay, and the, and the, the civilization that we make are kind of a reflection of that. You know, people practicing that spirituality in their own life. And we benefit, everybody benefits from it, you know, and the ones, people who don't, you know, selfish ambition is the dark side of human nature. And that, you know, that's the wild, that's the wilderness, you know, it's not, that's not human nature. That's animals, that's natural for animals, but not for human beings. Human beings are not, are not animals. This idea that they're teaching in school that human beings are just smart animals is just not accurate. Human beings have been diverging from the animal kingdom for millions of years, you know, really. But especially since you know, the last few thousand years, you know, when the, with the religion started up, you know, Adam, he started, he's actually, Adam really started, the, you could say Adam is the beginning of the divergence of human nature from the animal kingdom. And, um, all the you know, manifestations of God come, the divine teachers come and they reveal the word of God and human nature evolves according to that, those teachings. And um, we've evolved through waves of progress from all, you know, Adam and Noah and Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad, you know, Krishna and Buddha are all manifestations of God. You know, they're all the manifestations of God. They're divine teachers. And now Baha'u'llah has revealed this new religion with this one world civilization. And I, I the, the, what this political unity that's come, that we're in right now with the United Nations and it's, it's part of the process. It's a gradual process. We're not just suddenly, you know, that's why this whole thing about racism in the United States and how we're, the United States is evil because we had slavery. The United States was a rebellion against slavery and, and all that and the whole kingdom and everything like that. We rebelled against that. And we've been rebelling. We've been making waves of progress. I'm not saying we're not we're perfect or anything like that. There's a lot of racism, and we need to fix that. That's something we need to work on. But just claiming the United States is somehow intrinsically racist is just it's a lie. And everybody needs to be taught that in school and everywhere. 
because it's a fact. I know, I've studied history a lot. That's one of my favorite subjects, always has been. And I know for a fact that my ancestors fought tooth and nail to get rid of any kind of social hierarchy, any, you know, including slavery. You know, they were called abolitionists. You know, John Adams was an abolitionist. He was one of the founders of the United States, and they were opposed to slavery. You know, the Constitution has kind of a defect in it, but that defect was, at the time, was not a defect. Because what it says is, you know, the Native Americans and African Americans are counted as one-third of a part person. Now, you could say, oh, see, that's racist. But it's, the reason they put that in there was because the south, south, states in the South that had slavery, they wanted to count the slaves and the Native Americans. They had lots of slaves and Native Americans, and that would increase their vote in Congress. And so the people, the, the abolitionists said no. And so the compromise that they came to was is that they would have they would count you know however they would count two thirds or whatever it was you know it was, I think it was two thirds of a person and that way their vote in Congress would be diminished and so the the abolitionist states would win the vote in Congress. And they did. Eventually, they finally ended it. It took a while. It was not hard. It was easy. I mean, it was hard. It was not easy to end something. That, that institution has been around a lot longer than the United States has been around. Slavery has been around for thousands of years, you know, long before the United States was ever even thought of. And we ended it. You know, within the first century of our existence, you know, as a nation, you know, this civilization ended slavery and pretty much for the world. Not, there's still slavery around the world, but I mean, it's not legal and it's, you know, very rare, you know, compared to what it was normal before the United States, the American Revolution. And so that's just a true fact of history. We fought for it. We believe in it. I believe in the freedom, equality, and justice for all. That's what I believe is, is good and right. You know, private property is good and right. And every that's a natural, it's a unalienable human right is private property. You know, we have a right to private property. And our state, you know, our civilization, our laws need to reflect that and protect, serve and protect the people of the of earth, you know, because I believe it's all one, you know, and all these nations, they need, each one needs to come up with their own ways and means of accomplishing it, but the laws, the universe, you know, the Universal Declaration of, of Human Rights is a great idea. You know, if you read those, read the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. They're not perfect. I don't agree with every exact detail of them, but they're pretty reasonable rules. You know, and I, you know, that's the rules, and every nation needs to follow those rules as, as, well, as well as we can. You know, it's uh, it's the same thing. You know, the Charter of the United Nations are pretty reasonable rules that we can follow. Everybody can get along with it, and we can work on it. And we, the nations, all meet and gather on a regular basis, and consult about what's going on in the world, and and they make decisions based on those consultations. And uh, it's very much de dedicated to peace and freedom. You know, and it, there's laws. It's like the law of the sea treaty. You got to have rules of navigation and rules to f everybody needs to follow the lo the rules, and they're reasonable rules. And there's there's always ways to fix. You know, the, amending the constitution. You know, the the charter is part of the charter. There's a way to amend it. If there's some rule that's not working, then we can amend the the charter to to fix that. And um, so, but we need to have some rules. That's, you know, civilized human beings must be governed. You know, that's 
what civilization is. It's governed. It's not wild, you know. And so we need to work on that. And um, so, you know, I'm just, uh, I like globalization. I like Earth. I think, you know, one of the most tr transformative events in the history of the world was when Apollo, whichever one of those Apollos, you know, I think it might have been Apollo 10 or something. It was the one, because I, I don't think they landed on the moon. I think they went and went around the moon and came back. I can be. I, I might be wrong about that. All I know is they came around the moon the first time. The spaceship came around the moon and the Earth rose. You know, and they could see the Earth rising from the horizon of the moon. That picture transformed human nature. Being able to see Earth from space, and you know. Even little kids out in the jungles in Africa and South America can see those pictures. You know, not all of them do, but I mean, they can. And, you know, and a lot of them do, you know, because we got education going pretty global now, which is a good thing. And, you know, so everybody can see that the earth is just one little tiny little ball floating around in space. And uh, it a vast you know, the, the space is vast, you know, and the Earth is just a tiny little planet, you know, and it's delicate and we need to be taking care of it. You know, this the whole global warming issue, you know, I, I, t I pretty much agree with the global warming people on that. If we don't, you know, because we're, if you, we, you, there's no way you can pump billions and billions of tons of chemicals into the atmosphere and not affect it. You know, I agree with the, the American patriots about freedom, equality, and justice for all. But I agree with the environmentalists. I believe that we have to take good care of the environment. We need to, you know, that's just not, you know, you know it's reasonable. You know, we have to take care of the environment. Don't litter. For God's sake, don't throw garbage on the ground. I can't believe how much garbage is, is on the ground in Seattle. It's this beautiful, gorgeous, beautiful city, and the ground is covered in garbage. How in the world can that be? Don't litter. It's one of the most disgraceful sins you can possibly commit. And I, I know it doesn't seem like much, but it's, you know, pigs, you know, they, they you know, live in their, gar you know, sewer, whatever, you know. I mean, come on. Let's just be reasonable. Don't throw garbage on the ground. There's garbage cans everywhere, and we need to make sure there's garbage cans everywhere. And just carry your garbage and put it into the garbage can. And we need to hire some of these poor people to pick up the trash and keep it picked up and you know give the you know that's a job they can do to work their way out of poverty you know come on let's get going let's get this done you know they're spent they're giving billions and trillions now they're giving trillions of dollars away for nothing which is a crime against humanity what's going on with the government, what they're doing and spending all this money on nothing, on garbage, stupid political insanity, you know, teaching people that there's no such thing as male and female. Oh, that's uh, absurd. And it's it's uh, shameful what's going on in our schools and our, our government is spending money on this garbage. Come on. You know, that's totally unacceptable and we need to fix that right now uh, to me I believe we need to get the United States needs to get its armies back inside the United States and they need to guard the border and they need to guard the schools and I mean literally we need army people there 
guarding those schools and watching and making sure that our kids are not being taught communist propaganda because that's what's happening right now from what I can see with my own eyes. And I don't even have kids. And I say that, you know, and, I, you know, I'm not, I, I think the communism has some good ideas. I've read the Communist Manifesto. Most of it is pretty, okay, I, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good ideas. But the one thing I don't agree with is the authoritarian, the communist dictatorship. That I don't, any kind of bully is, it's corruption of human nature. You know, and it doesn't matter whether it's a government bureaucrat or a business, you know, person that's doing, you know, bully tactics using, in, you know, or a street gangster or a husband with his family, you know, beating up on his wife or anything like that, or abusing children, any kind of bully, that is the crime. And we got to stop it in every facet of life, in politics, in religion, in families, in business, in every part of our civilization. We need to end bullying. And we need to have, you know, all these programs, instead of having programs about, they need to have programs about racism. I, I agree there needs to be programs to teach people to not be racist. But what they're teaching right now is, is racism. They're teaching people to be racist, which is absurd. I mean, I, I'm, I just can't believe that it's happening. And we need to stop it. And we used to need, need whatever force necessary to stop it. Because all Americans and all earthlings are precious noble creatures that we need to have a universal human right to the same as everybody else. And I think the issue of migration, people being, you know, I remember when I was a kid in the 1970s, they were, they had that, there, somebody wrote a book about the population explosion and they taught us, you know, we shouldn't be having so many kids. And so, American people start, you know, stopped having so many kids, man. We, you know, we barely have enough kids to replace ourselves these days. And now all these other countries that didn't do that are claiming that they have a right to just move right in and take over. And I'm going, you know, that's not right. No. You know, I think people, the people who live in each nation have a right to control who comes in and how many and and they have a right to control that and uh, but I, I do agree that eventually we're going to get to a point where people can live anywhere they want to anywhere on earth but we're not there yet and so and as long as we've got nations like we do then I believe each nation has a right to control who comes into it you know and the people in the United States have a right. To, we've created a great civilization. You know, and another thing is, I, you know, I actually agree with a lot of the ideas of the World Economic Forum. I've read some of their stuff, and I, yeah, they're, they're, I think they're patriots trying to make the world a better place, for the most part. The control freaks, I don't agree with, and on any level, you know, but for in general, they're, I think the, World Economic Forum has got some good ideas. And I remember reading a few years back, it was several, many years back, you know, that, and two of the, wor the biggest risk factors for the world economy were income inequality. And I said, okay, that makes sense. You know, both within nations and between nations. And doing something about that, I, what I see happening as a result, all these years later, it's like, okay, so what they've done is in order to solve that problem, they're, they're like turn, trying to turn the United States into a, like a third world country for, you know, you know, making the United States poor, you know, because they don't want to try to bring those others up because they're afraid that that's going to, you know, if everybody lived like the Americans lived, then it would just ruin the the 
environment and stuff like that. And yeah, that might be right, but I'm, I don't know. All I know is, is that that is a terrible idea to say that you're going to, okay, we're going to, let's, let's, you know, turn the United States into a third world country where you got a, a few rich people and a whole bunch of poor people. That is a terrible idea. And the people that are doing it are, uh, you know, that they're bad people. That's all there is to it. I don't care. I, you know, maybe I'm a bad person too. But trying to do that is evil. And um, I, I, I don't agree with it. And what we need right now, you know, I think, uh, I think that uh, people have, anybody having hundreds of billions of dollars while there's just thousands of homeless people wandering the streets or hundreds, at least hundreds of homeless people wandering the streets is just, that's corrupt. It is totally not okay. And we need to fix it. I don't know exactly how, but we need to fix it. We need to fix it so most of the people of Earth are middle class people. You know, the middle class in everywhere in the world you know, the whole freedom, equality, and justice for all philosophy, we need to spread that around the world. It needs to be a global philosophy, not just an American one. You know, and we need to, because see, I remember World War II and they fought and, you know, the generals, they wanted to take everything. They, they, had, they, they had the means to do it. And they wanted to take the whole planet and, and make it, you know, free. And the president said no. And that was probably a good thing at the time. You know, I mean, it, we, we're not into dictating to other what other nations should be doing. That's not our way. And so we didn't do that. And so we allowed the totalitarianism to fester overseas. And it, it's like a cancer. It, it's, it, it, it metastasized and now, the communists are trying to take over the United States and they're inside the gate and they're inside the government and they're, I can't, it's just unbelievable that the communists have, are taking over the United States and we the people of earth must stop it. And we need to, any kind of totalitarianism needs to be wiped off the face of the earth. And, um, I don't want to get in trouble, but I, I, I can't just stand, not say anything. I can't just, because I like being free. I, I, I don't, I, you know, I, you know, I like the human race. I want to be peaceful and prosperous. I, don't, I just don't want to be ordered around. I don't want doctors, some doctor being able to force me to take medicine I don't need or want. I think that's insane. It's barbaric, it's, it's insane, and it's criminal. And if the government of the United States will not protect me from that, then the government of the United States is a, crim a criminal. Any government, whether it's the Chinese government or the American government or any other government, or the state government, any government, the United Nations, if the United Nations tries to do something like that, or the World Health Organization, they're evil. They have no right to do that. People have a right, a universal human right. It does, and that right comes from God. It doesn't come from any government or man-made anything. It comes from God. And we need to defend that. Our civilization must reflect that in order to be sustainable. You know, the only way civilization can be sustainable is by reflecting the you know the divine rule of law. You know, by following that and practicing that the divine rule of law in our lives individually and collectively is how to create. It's the only way to create a sustainable civilization. And abandoning those principles and, you know, of family values and morals and stuff like that and 
that's the end of civilization every time you know and I guess these civilizations might be ending I don't know I hope not I, you know I, I want civilization to gradually evolve gradually into the most great peace where where that's ruled the, the whole kingdom of God you know I don't want there to be another wave of violent upheaval demolishing civilization so we can start all over again no that's not what I want I want to let's take the civilization we have and keep working on improving it and making it better and not you know instead of demolishing it because it's not perfect that's crazy that's insane so that's what I'm teaching that's what I practice in my life I, I I'm kind of you know I moved to Seattle because I wanted to live in the city I thought it would with the mountains and the city and the ocean all in the same place and it would it would be the, the most beautiful place in the United States and, and and it is in a certain sense, but the, the civilization here, the culture here, it's like, it's not a very, it's, it's not, how do I say, it's, it's not sustainable, I can tell you that. You know, if you ignore the natural laws of human nature and civilization, that civilization is not sustainable, it won't last. And there's so much corruption, you know, the, the the lack of family, you know, the, the family values and, uh, you know, the, we have like the richest, two of the richest human beings ever alive on earth from Seattle. And yet we've got hundreds and hundreds of people just sleeping on the sidewalk. How can anybody think that's acceptable? It's not acceptable. And we need to do something about it. I don't know exactly what we need to do, but we need to do something. We need to fix the problem. It's got to be at the kind of at the top of the list of problems that we need to fix. And um, you know, I say you know, keep doing the freedom, equality, and justice for all. I, I think they're good ideas, and I think that. Uh, the United, I think the United States Constitution is an honorable enterprise. And I also think the United Nations and the Charter of the United Nations and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights are an honorable enterprise. And we need, the United Nations needs the United States to be in there working on promoting freedom, equality, and justice for all. Standing up for capitalism, democracy, and human rights in the world government. We need that. The United States needs it, and the United Nations needs it. And it's, you know, that otherwise, it's going to not be a good thing. You know, because, you know, we're really the only one that has the that's big enough to do that in the world, and can, we're up against some up against some organizations that are a lot bigger than we are. There's, we're the only ones that are going to be able to stand up to them, and I hope we do. I don't, I, you know, I hope we don't surrender and and just allow the communists to take over. And I, I, can't, I can't help myself. It's I can't. The communists are evil. What's going on is not okay, and we need to stand up to them and get them out of our government. And I don't know what we need, to, how we're going to solve the problem. We need to do. We need to deal with it. You know, I feel like it's like, you know, we're we're well past Pearl Harbor, and we may be getting close to. I I think we got a ways to go before we get to the, you know the. What was that battle down there by Australia? The Coral Sea, the Battle of Coral Sea. You know, that period when the Japan was just expanding and nobody could stop them. You know, that's we're in that stage of this, and it's that, and I think I believe it is. It's literally a war between 
you know, COVID was a biological weapon that was deployed and it was caused by, you know, Anthony Fauci invented it, you know, helped pay, pay for it and everything. And those people, they should be paid for, they have to pay for that, you know, for justice, you know, freedom, equality, and justice for all. You know, it's not, you know, these people that have been running around robbing and stealing the poor people of Earth, they need to pay for their crimes against humanity. And these are famous people that everybody knows about, everybody knows who they are, and they're basically robbing and stealing the people. They're basically a criminal mafia running the United States. And they need to be arrested and, and prosecuted for racketeering and influence corrupt organizations as, as soon as possible because they have caused more damage to the United States than any people ever. And we have a right to defend ourselves and, we need, and, and I say we should defend ourselves. I love the United States. I love God. I love Baha'u'llah. I want to be a Baha'i. I just can't stand by and not say, we have to stand up for ourselves and not allow this to happen. They're, you know, they're, it's right now. Now is the time. And because uh, I, I remember reading back in the 1970s, the plan of the communists, what they were, how they were going to take over the world. And we're watching it play out right in day every day. It's just like they're just doing it. And, and like, and I remember reading about it in back in high school in the 1970s that this is what their plan was. And now here we are watching them do it. And I say, stop it. I don't know who, where the patriots are or what they're doing or what. I hope that they got a plan. Because I don't want to be a communist. I don't want to live in a communist country. I don't want to live where doctors can order you to take medicine that you don't want or need. You know, I've got, I, I work on my own medicine. I, I, you know, I study medicine and, and I take care of myself. Okay, and I don't want or need any doctor. I mean, I, I respect doctors. They have valuable knowledge. And I would like to be able to go and consult with the doctor, but I'd like to avoid doctors right now because they're crazy lunatics. Anybody that thinks it's okay to physically uh, mutilate children with chemicals and other in surgery is, I, it's, it's like, a, it's, it's psychopathic criminal and we need to stop this we need to go after that so what i mean about having the army back here guarding our schools and our children and every other part of our society because what's going on is totally not okay it's not okay you know all this transgenderism stuff you know if you want to go get change yourself into a, the opposite gender, that's fine. I don't care. That's your business. Yeah, it's your free freedom. And you can do that. But what they're doing right now with teaching and cramming this crap down everybody's throat and forcing everybody to agree with stuff that is just obviously absurd and not true. Come on, people. Let's get, let's get this stopped right now. You know, I don't know if we can wait another year you know maybe i don't know i you know do what do something you know don't just let these people ruin our civilization because that's what they're doing and they're doing it and they're doing it on purpose and we got to stop it so you know and we can we can you know and i i don't know i don't know what's going to happen you know the whole uh Evolution of human nature and civilization. It's a fascinating. We're in it live in a very fascinating time. You know, I like all this technology. You know, I like the technology of the the that we have, and you know, the trans, what are the transhumanist technology? I think that's probably a good thing. 
the global cloud of artificial intelligence, I think is a good thing. It's that it's exactly like guns. It's not whether the guns are good or evil. The guns are not good or evil. They're just tools. It's what we do with them that is good or evil. And we can, it's exactly the same with, uh, you know, artificial intelligence. You know, it's what we do with it that, that is good or evil. I just remember to look at the camera instead of the picture of me. Because I, I record these videos on my phone, you know, that's, I don't have a bunch of fancy equipment. So I just make the videos on my phone and I'm watching. Anyway. But anyway, we got to fix this, man. We can't just let these tyrants, the control freaks, they, sound, they, they remind me of a bunch of kids, you know, college kids in school thinking they're so important but, and, and coming up with these ridiculous ideas about what to do you know they're college people they, they've never really worked they've never created a business they get a job when they're 20 something working for the government they just graduated from college they get a job at, at the, working for the government and that's the only thing they've ever done their whole life and they work in the government and they're now they're 50 60 years old and they just think they were born to roll and we got to stop this. We got to get do something. We got to fix this because no, nobody is born to rule. You know, there's some people. You know, uh, you know. I don't know what we got to do, but we got to fix our civilization is really in trouble right now. And so I, you know, I want us to get. I, I want us to fix it because we got a lot of good stuff to work with, man. The whole, uh, you know, space, that's so cool, man, what's going on with the space development. We need to keep going with that. We need to make sure we, that they follow the rule of law up there in space, you know. And our civilization is a global, right now it's a global civilization. You know, we're, I, there's nowhere in this solar system where human beings can migrate to, by the way. You know, the, the only planet with 1G is Venus, and it's 800 degrees on the surface of Venus. It's, and it's sulfuric acid atmosphere and molten rocks everywhere. It, there's no way we're going to transform that planet. You know, and that's the only one with 1G. That's the key factor. You know, unless we figure out how to do artificial gravity, we got to have 1G. You know, and we may figure out how to do artificial, because I kind of think the artificial gravity is how these, uh, how you make the jump to light speed is by artificial gravity. You know, you create, uh, that's why the UFOs can make the acute angle turns where they're, you know, they just suddenly change directions, you know, 500 Gs or whatever. And uh, is because they're they have they're creating their own gravity field, so they're not affected by inertia or, or the gravity outside the ship. They don't even feel it. You know, the ship just, you know, they don't have to tell the ship what to do. They just oh, I, I want to go see what's over there, or change their mind instead of going over there. They want to go over there, and, so, and the ship just instantly starts going wherever they want to go. And, uh, but it's artificial gravity. That's how they make the jump from one solar system to another. And so it's possible we may do that. And if that, if that, that, then we might be able to put people on Mars or something like that, you know, or the moon, you know. We could put people up there for short periods of time. They can go up there, I would say like a couple of years max, and then they got to come back to Earth, you know because of the gravity. You gotta have one G. Especially little kids, you know, I mean, if somebody gets pregnant in space, they gotta come back to Earth immediately because of the baby. You know, think little interesting little things like that. You know, so we got a lot of good things. And the, and the whole computer thing, you know, I've been teaching you guys to uh, build your own cloud of artificial intelligence. It's not really building your own cloud of artificial intelligence. It's building your own dashboard to the global cloud of artificial intelligence. One that gives you control over it instead of 
the corporation. See, you know, and the reason I did that is because I read the the user agreement for Windows 95 from start to finish. And when I finished reading that document, I was like, oh, no, I don't agree to that. And so I've been trying to, I've been using Linux ever since. And so I like Linux, you know, and I teach people to use Linux. You know, I'm not a, a computer scientist, so I don't. Yeah, I've been trying to make a bunch of documentation about Linux, and it's not all that great, you know. But I'll probably keep working on that because I'm learning. I keep learning. I get more and more smart about it. But and I do definitely. I think that the free and open source software, even though it's kind of communistic, is part of the solution to the whole tyrant tyranny, this whole social hierarchy, what I call the imperial pyramid, or you could call it the military industrial complex, you know, feature of human nature and civilization. I think that that whole system is obsolete and it's in the process of being selected for extinction, you know, because there's a whole new civilization growing on Earth right now, and it's global. It's the whole planet Earth, and there's no, you know, superior people or inferior people. It's just, it's just not part of human nature. It's not part of reality. You know, we're growing out of the whole phase, and all these civilizations are clashing because they're converging, and you know, into one universal and divine civilization. And, it's interesting. It's fun, you know. It's uh, watch, watch the Earthlings. You know, they're 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 funny. They're very entertaining, you know. Watching, I can sit there and watch the Earthlings for a long time, you know. Watch what what's going on. Uh, you know, we got the the space spacefaring. We're building the spacefaring civilization, one universal and divine civilization, a spacefaring civilization, and the artificial intelligence. You know, I, I imagine having my house, being able to talk to your house. Your house would be intelligent. It would know which room you were in. It would know if you were having any kind of medical issues. You could, you know, tell, report. It would, uh, but it would be controlled by you, you know, and not anybody else. No doctors or no Microsoft or anything like that. Or, or, or the state. It would be strictly forbidden from interfering in your own private space. And then uh, you would be able to, you know, control your kids, what what access they have to the, the cloud. And then uh, you one of the rooms, at least one of the rooms in your house would be like the, the teaching room where it, all the walls would be TV screens and you know, and it would be like a Star Trek holodeck, you know, where, but they would go in there and they, it would, they would go to school in there. And um, your car, you know, would plug in, it would recharge every night and, you know, and it would be like a, a robot, you know, that drives you around wherever you want to go, you know. And, uh, you know, that's what's coming. And I think it's a great thing. You know, it just needs, we need our laws to catch up with to the technology and keep up with the technology. That's all. You know, make sure we go protect our, serve and protect the people. You know, protect our freedom, equality, and justice for all, our, our human rights, our private property, you know, our democracy, and our human rights. If you think that it's a good idea to teach poor people how to survive and thrive in our 21st century world economy, then please donate. You know, buy the book. You know, buy my book, Holistic Home Office, is the book I wrote. And, uh, you know, and you can donate. If you think this is a good idea, what I'm trying to do, teaching people how to thrive in our world economy, then Please donate on the website, PayPal. You know, just donate right there. It would be helpful to me. I would greatly appreciate it. 
it's looking okay, but it could look a lot better. And if I had the time to where I could just work on the website all the time and not have to worry about, you know, paying my bills and getting food and stuff like that, I could make a, I think I could get a pretty nice teaching system built here. And that's, which is what I'm trying to do. So have a great day, you know, have a great life. You know, life on earth is an adventure, you know. Create something valuable and trade it in our global civilization, our global cloud of artificial intelligence, our one world free marketplace. You know, get in there and make something valuable and trade it and create, you know, have fun. Making the world a better place. Thanks. Bye.